It begins! When it comes to comics, I feel about Superman the same way I feel about the Fantastic Four. When a new creative team comes aboard, I'll read a few issues and if I like it, I'll stay aboard. However, if I don't like the issues, I'll drop off until a new creative team comes aboard. Back in early 2001, I wasn't reading Superman comics. It wasn't until I read an issue of Wizard Magazine that I started reading Superman again. I believe this issue was on their monthly must-read list. After reading it, this became my all-time favorite Superman issue. Since 2001, I've read this story at least once a year. I believe that the best stories of a character are those that are the boiled down essence of that character. What I love about this story is that it shows Superman at his best and not simply as some guy, Jesus metaphor, or superpowered boy scout, but as a human being. It also shows what Superman stands for and why his ideals are still relevant today. Also, it's a good argument against the overly violent extremist nature. By this time in 2001, Batman had taken over Superman as DC's flagship character, and there was talk in the fan and media community that Superman should be more like Batman, at least in tone. Man is still anyone? This issue shows why we need for Superman to be the way he is. The Story the issue begins with Superman flying to another country in order to stop a giant ape with a machine gun. When he arrives, the several skyscraper sized ape is dead, as is thousands of people as part of the collateral damage. He soon meets the group that caused it, the Elite. They are basically what would happen if you stuff a ton of superpowers into the Punisher and then put a teleport on him and then let him just go wild. Suffice to say, Superman doesn't get along with them. Over the course of the issue, they run to each other several times and the tension keeps building until the unavoidable final confrontation. During this, we also get to see how the people of the world are handling this new type of heroism. Some are eager for it, while others are conflicted. For some people, there isn't a real clear-cut answer. Is the type of work that superheroes like Superman do redundant? A half measure? Handling criminals like the elite do is easier and you have to admit, it does get results. While this is happening, President Lex Luthor meets with Amanda Waller to see how he can possibly bend this to his own interest in the future. My second favorite part of this story is the end fight. It's well paced and there's tension because the elite's power set, notably Manchester Blacks, are more than a match for Superman. However, the best part of the fight is when Clark is able to get his bearings and gets creative, let's say. He does things I never saw him do before and it makes me question why aren't more writers more creative with his powers? You don't have to keep giving him new ones in order to make him or his already existing powers more interesting. That said, my actual favorite part of the book occurs when we see Clark push against the wall and not confident on what to do. So he does the most logical thing. He gets input from his friends and family about it. My favorite moment of this is when he's in bed discussing the issue with his wife Lois. It's here that Clark confesses this is also a matter of pride, dueling ideologies. Because yeah, even Lois points out, why not just get help from the JLA? Clark doesn't see that as an option. Also, it has to be him that resolves this. Otherwise, if the JLA gets involved, it'll just perpetrate or strengthen the elite's position even if the JLA did defeat him. The real gut punch moment for me is in the conversation is when Lois says she thinks they can beat him. Typically, this is where I talk about the pros and cons. As far as the writing goes, no issues. The writing is the best thing about the comic. For me, the best scenes are when characters are interacting with one another, whether it's Clark and Manchester Black going back and forth about their different ideas or Lois and Clark discussing something. Joe Kelly really understood, based on this issue, how important interpersonal relationships are in the Clark-Superman dynamic. Also, Clark and Superman aren't different people, so they shouldn't be written that way. Well, they should be tweaked a little. 
Superman is Clark Kent, just a more heightened version. Think Peter Parker and Spider-Man. Artwork-wise, Probe, there are two different pencilers on this book, and for the most part, the contrasting styles work. Each artist is able to deliver the impact of every scene they worked on. Also, some of the special effects were hand-drawn, and they were amazing. Con, this is an extra size anniversary issue, and it has two different pencilers, Doug Mankey and Lee Bermo. And their artwork is different enough that it is noticeable. What makes it bad though is there isn't one or two inkers, but six. And when you have six inkers interpreting two pencilers work, it can get muddled and incomprehensible. The real problem here is the overabundance of shadows. They sometimes nullify the features of the characters, making them look inhuman. Frankly, I don't know why this occurred. I mean, DC Comics did know that this issue was coming out. They shoved decade one penciler and one inker just to do this issue. Having six do the job of one and two do the job of one is a bit messed up. But fortunately, it's not so convoluted or muddled that it gets in front of your enjoyment of the issue. Obviously, I recommend this. In this story, Clark faces a crisis and confronts it and is able to defeat it more in a philosophical way than a physical and at the same time show everyone watching the same inspiration he provided over 75 years ago today. It might sound like I'm going overboard, but I love this issue because it inspires me to be a better person. And that's why Superman has been popular all these years. Truth, justice, and the American way, working hard and respecting and treating people with kindness and compassion aren't bad concepts or beliefs to live by. The only reasons I feel characters like Superman or Captain America seem boring is because of the interest or skill level of the writer. Stories like these show that these characters have distinct personalities, flaws, likes, dislikes, and are interesting to read or watch. Before I go, I'll end on this. I believe this back and forth perfectly exemplifies just who Superman is and what he stands for. If you think this is over, you're living in a bloody dream world. You know what, Black? I wouldn't have it any other way. Dreams save us. Dreams lift us up and transform us. And on my soul, I swear, until my dream of a world where dignity, honor, and justice becomes the reality we all share, I'll never stop fighting. Ever. <laughs>